Many of us were frustrated that the Old Republic era of Star Wars was designated as Legends, and not canonical to the true history of Star Wars. However, over the past six to seven years, Lucasfilm have been slowly re-including things from the KOTOR games into the current canon. So here are ten things from the Knights of the Old Republic games that you likely didn't know existed in the Disney canon of Star Wars. The Devastation of Taris the Devastation of Taris is an iconic moment within Knights of the Old Republic 1. Malak's orbital bombardment of the Ecumenopolis caused ripples across the galaxy and was the catalyst for the story. Additionally, a destroyed, overgrowth-ridden Taris was featured in the Old Republic MMO, showing how the Republic was diverting many resources into rebuilding and resettling on the devastated surface. While the exact nature of Taris's destruction hasn't been explored, in the Disney canon, Taris was an Ecumenopolis much like its legend's predecessor, but had, in the past, had its surface devastated by an unknown event, leaving the world mostly as ruins and wasteland, with only several cities dotted across its surface. The planet Taris was recanonized in the Tarkin novel, and the destruction of Taris's surface itself was recanonized in the Aftermath novels. Exar Kun Exar Kun was the ancient Sith Lord who splintered the Jedi Order and led the Great Sith War, and was a vital character within the tales of the Jedi comics. Although not directly in the Knights of the Old Republic games, Exar's impact is felt majorly throughout every facet of the story. An integral character within Legends, Exar Kun has been featured in several canonical works, mainly the Gadgets and Gear role-playing sourcebook. The ancient Sith Lord is recognised as the mythical Jedi who fell to the dark side, and that double-bladed lightsabers dated back to his era, much like his Legends counterpart. Additionally, the Great Sith War that he led against the Jedi in Legends was also canonised in the High Republic novel Light of the Jedi. The Mass Shadow Generator Malachor's destruction under the Orders of Revan and by the hand of Beodor shaped the entire story of Knights of the Old Republic, and is one of the most cataclysmic events historically to the Republic and the Jedi Order. The superweapon that caused this atrocity was none other than the Mass Shadow Generator. In canon, however, the Mass Shadow Generator was a rumoured superweapon that was supposedly used in the past. The Rebellion had heard rumours that the Galactic Empire was trying to recreate and build their own version of the Mass Shadow Generator, but there was no concrete proof, and although concern of its potential, they believed the Empire had not made any breakthroughs in its development. The Mass Shadow Generator's existence was canonised in the reference book The Rebel Files. HK Hunter Killer Assassin Droids HK-47 is the most iconic droid of the Old Republic franchise, and beloved by many. However, HK-47 and the HK-50 Assassin Droids were utterly unique droids crafted by Darth Revan that merely shared visual similarities. The HK Hunter-Killer Assassin Droids, originally developed by Circa and beyond Revan's models such as the HK-1, 24 and 51 models, had an impact in many galactic affairs, with many different variations appearing throughout history despite being banned. In canon, the same design as the original HK models appeared as HK model gladiator droids, and droids known as HK-87 assassin droids also appeared in The Mandalorian. The HK gladiator droid which shared the original KOTOR droid design was canonised by the reference book Smuggler's Guide. T3 Astromech Droid Chassis Like HK-47, T3M4 is an iconic character within the Knights of the Old Republic games. The general T3 series utility droid was popular within the Old Republic era, and was seen commonly across the galaxy on major starships and in the hands of junkyard dealers. While the T3 designation itself is still legends, as is their historical relevance, the same design of the T3 model was canonised in the 2018 comic Star Wars Adventures as a maintenance droid known as ML-08, a droid owned by the smuggler Jackson. Additionally, a very similar looking droid to T3M4 can also be spotted by eagle-eyed viewers in the animated show Star Wars Resistance. The Unknown World The ancient Rakata race were at the centre of the lore of Knights of the Old Republic and the history of the galaxy in general. A race long forgotten, but their impact forever felt. The Starforge was the pinnacle of the ancient Infinite Empire's technological might, 
but their barbaric ways and pervasion of the Force eventually led to a disease that crippled the Empire's power, and left those who survived as primitives on their capital planet of Lehon, or otherwise known as Rakata Prime. Lehon, by the time of the Old Republic, was simply known as the Unknown World, and was an integral part of Revan's journey both as a Sith Lord and Jedi. Rakata Prime was canonised in the Force Awakens Visual Dictionary, and its earlier name of Lehon was reintroduced into canon in Star Wars Resistance. The Infinite Empire and the Rakatans themselves have yet to appear in any canon media, but one can only imagine it's just a matter of time. Revan and Mitra Surik Saviour, Conqueror, Hero, Villain Feared as the dreaded Darth Revan and revered as a hero, Revan's story is central to the story of Knights of the Old Republic and is one of the most iconic characters throughout the entire Star Wars universe. The same goes for his trusted general Mitra Surik, who carved out her own legacy as the infamous Jedi Exile who went on to rebuild the Jedi Order. While their stories are yet to be fully introduced, both protagonists of the Knights of the Old Republic games have been referenced in Star Wars canon to some degree. The Sith Lord Darth Revan himself was directly referenced as an ancient Sith Lord of historical significance in the Rise of Palpat- I mean Skywalker's visual novel. The name Surik was also referenced in the High Republic comics line, and while the name doesn't necessarily equate to the character, the writer of the comic Cavan Scott was asked if it was a direct reference to the Jedi Exile, and he implied it was. Tarentatex The giant, vicious beast known as the Tarentatek were crafted and made by Jedi on Tython thousands of years in the past. However, these monsters began to hunger for the blood of Force sensitives. Several of these beasts were killed by Revan on his journey to discover the star maps, the most notable of these being found in the tomb of Nargisadau, and another hidden near the tomb of Ludo Kresh. The Tarentatek was surprisingly mentioned and canonised in an older episode of The Clone Wars, and was first visually seen in the mobile game known as Star Wars Commander as a mounted trophy head. The Dynamic Class Freighter The Ebon Hawk is the home hub of both Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic games, and features quite prominently as the most iconic ship in the Old Republic era. The Ebon Hawk itself, however, was known as a Dynamic Class Freighter, and the design of the Dynamic Class Freighter shared with the Ebon Hawk, while not directly named as such, was visually canonised in the Star Wars Adventure comics. Zerka Corporation The nefarious Zerka Corporation shows up numerous times throughout both Knights of the Old Republic games, often doing something shady such as trying to sell Wookiees as slaves, or trying to ruin the restoration project on Telos. Although an arms manufacturer, Zerka often slid their way into a multitude of galactic affairs just to make a quick profit, regardless of the moral conundrum. The Zerka Corporation in Star Wars canon is very much the same. It's said that Zerka was older than the Republic, and they often made use of heavy slave labour. While canonised directly in the 2015 Ultimate Star Wars reference book, Zerka has been mentioned numerous times in novels and in games such as Star Wars Battlefront 2, Squadrons, and Star Wars Uprising. Now there are many things from the Knights of the Old Republic games that have made their way into Star Wars canon, but I thought these 10 were probably the coolest to learn about, and they're a little bit more obscure and a little less known than the ones such as Malachor and the Mandalorian Wars. I've also considered making a really long video about every single thing that's currently canon from the Knights of the Old Republic games. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more Knights of the Old Republic and Star Wars content from me. Also, don't forget to come and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and join the Discord server because I would love to have you there. All links are in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, may the Force be with you. Always.